so uh, good evening to all the students uh, welcome to electrical machines 2 uh, nptel uh, ta course so myself uh, i am sai krishna mulpuri uh, i am a research scholar so i will be assisting you uh, with the uh, tutorials that happening uh, for the entire course during this semester so uh, what we will do is in the sessions um, most importantly whatever topics you have been discussed uh, during the week one by professor and that topics a gist of those topics we will discuss in this tutorial session and following this tutorial session with this uh, discussion only we will try to solve from uh, some numerical problems that will help you to solve the assignments following the uh, that week so we will see some numerical problems as well as we will discuss some concepts that you that will be useful for you all and then uh, we will proceed every week uh, the same discussion same time so yeah uh, students can uh, mute themselves uh, i think some of their microphone is on uh, yeah please uh, uh, mute while uh, we are discussing and then whenever you want to raise a question or doubt you can unmute yourself and talk or else uh, it's better if we uh, if, if we keep the microphones off of the students uh, by mistake if you have unmuted you can mute yourself yeah so yeah i hope you can see the screen as well so here uh, before going into discussion uh, let's see a quick overview of what we are going to discuss in this particular course so yeah one second someone has joined yeah so yeah uh, here we are seeing uh, electrical machines 2 so the primary focus of this electrical machine 2 course will be on uh, more over like ec machines uh, in electrical machines 1 uh, uh, the last semester course uh, we discussed dc machines as well as transformers also uh, but in this session uh, in this course uh, 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 going forward all these 12 weeks we will be discussing electrical machines 2 concepts that is primarily it will be focusing on three phase induction motors single phase induction motors as well as synchronous motors uh, now uh, there are some standards uh, like underlying principles of all these motors and machines uh, that that are, that are more important before actually discussing directly these machines so and also uh, before going directly into the machines uh, we have to discuss some basic operating principles of these machines and even before going there it is very important to understand uh, about this windings of electrical machines one second someone has joined yeah so these two are the basic uh, things we need to understand before actually discussing the machines directly uh, now when when we study any electrical motor what we will try to do because uh, to study its performance every every day we try to draw its equivalent circuit right so equivalent circuit of any motor uh, is very important because by drawing that electric uh, equivalent circuit we will try to analyze the performance of this machines so uh, every electrical equivalent circuit is able to replicate the performance it is by looking at the equivalent circuit itself we can uh, uh, we can able to uh, predict the performance of the electrical machine so this electrical equivalent circuit uh, of any machine is very important in order to understand the performance of that machine now if you remember in your uh, dc machines uh, and transformers course in the electrical machines one course we discussed this equivalent circuit of dc machine and also for the transformer uh, now before going into this ac machines we will talk about a uh, basics of a coil uh, what is a coil what is the inductance of a coil and what is the self inductance what is mutual inductance that those concepts we will uh, just touch upon so that this will give you a base for the magnetic circuits moving forward so these concepts are very important before going to the actual ac machines now we will start our discussion yeah i hope you all can see my screen as well so uh, we will start our discussion today by discussing basic concepts of the coils so i will i will also uh, discuss with you i will draw uh, some diagrams i will draw some uh, figures and also i will derive some equations and i will discuss some concepts with you so i will also suggest you to take a book pen whatever or paper you, with you and try to analyze the uh, concept with me and try to understand the concept with me if uh, post that we will also 
try to solve some numerical problems as well so during that part also i will strongly suggest everyone to pick up your pen and paper and solve along with me so that you will also get hang of all the concepts you will try to apply these concepts and that will be very one second yeah that will be very useful for you even for solving the assignments following on so yeah first we will uh, look at the equivalent circuit of a transformer so why we are looking at the transformer equivalent circuit because transformer is nothing but a coils right there are two coils separated by a core so that is very important to understand before discussing the ac machines uh, now if we see equivalent circuit of a transformer we will try but we won't discuss uh, but we won't, we are not trying to arrive at the transformer equivalent circuit by transformer operation but we will try to arrive at that equivalent circuit of transformer with the viewpoint of circuit analysis basics of networks uh, i think someone's uh, microphone is on uh, okay yeah now it's fine so yeah we will try to arrive at the equivalent circuit of transformer using the concepts of circuit analysis so this way we will understand more clearly what's happening within the circuit uh, transformer equivalent circuit so let me just try, uh, quickly draw equivalent circuit of a transformer this we already remember uh, it is one second someone has joined okay uh, in equivalent circuit of transformer what we will have primary side of the transformer secondary side of the transformer so we will refer the secondary side to the primary side uh, and we will have resistance and reactance and one magnetizing branch and supply and the load so simple uh, simple uh, equivalent circuit i'm trying to draw here This is AC supply, and we will have a resistance here, and inductance here, and we will have magnetizing branch. Ah, uh, this is secondary side that is being referred to the primary side, and secondary side resistance, and the primary side, uh, secondary side inductance that is reactance, and also let's say we will represent it with the load, and. so yeah this one so we will just give some uh, notations of each and every value here so it is v1 that is supply primary side uh, the one uh, subscript one denotes the primary side and r1 and xl1 and yeah and it is jxm that is yeah magnetizing reactance and so here the secondary parameters we are referring to the primary side so while we referring we need to take care of the turns ratio as well i will just let's say i'll just write here a let's say this is the turns ratio this is n1 by n2 and can anyone tell me what is this resistance now refer to primary r2 is there but we have to multiply with some factor to get the primary refer uh, refer to the primary can anyone tell me this is xl2 and yeah this is low okay any, any idea so what what should be this uh, conversion factor i already mentioned this is the turns ratio a is n1 by n2 so n1 is the primary turns n2 is secondary turns so we need to multiply resistance with square of the turns ratio to get the uh, uh, resistance refer to the primary this is a square into xl2 so yeah this is the entire equivalent circuit of the transformer refer to the primary side now we are trying to arrive at this particular uh, equivalent circuit through circuit analysis concepts we will take single coil and we will see we, we, we will pass some current through it and we will see how the flux is generated and how each flux is generated being taken as a voltage source and we will we will try to uh, we, we will try to write some kvl equations for the primary side as well as kvl for the secondary side and we will combine those two to get a equivalent circuit the the figure you are seeing 
we can easily get uh, that figure using the circuit analysis concepts of KVL, KCL, and uh, basic network network analysis. We will see that. So, um, in order to arrive at this purely from the circuit analysis, uh, we will see what exactly a transformer is. So, you know, simply a transformer is nothing but uh, a connection of two coils which are coupled magnetically. There is no uh, electrical connection between these two coils. They are magnetically coupled. So, let's say I'm drawing a core here. Okay. Let's say I'm just... This is the winding. So try to draw a winding like this always because it, it, it represents the style of uh, winding. So you won't get confused. Yeah. So yeah. So this is N1 and uh, this is N2. And yeah, this is the basic uh, transformer. I'm not trying to connect any voltages or representing any currents. I'm just showing you a uh, simple transformer having two coils. Each of turns N1 and secondary turns N2. Now, by looking at the circuit, we can see that these two coils, uh, N1 and N2, are ha having mutual coupling between them. So, these will be mutually coupled only when we try to pass a current through any of the coil. Let's say I am trying to pass some current in, say, coil 1. Now, whenever, uh, whenever I pass some uh, current through the coil, flux will be generated in the coil. Now, the flux we have provided a path for the flux to flow through the core. Now, uh, when the current, uh, see, the, I have loads, I have thrown some current in this uh, coil and flux will be generated and the flux passes through this path and while passing through that path, it, it, it will link with the other coil because secondary coil is right there in its path. Now, when the, when the primary flux that is generated by the primary winding links with the secondary, uh, I mean, links with the other coil, it will induce some voltage in that coil. So that is the law. No, right now, even, even though there is no electrical connection, these two are getting magnetically coupled because of the flux generated by the primary coil. So, so that, that's a basic uh, understanding of how these two coils are magnetically coupled. So now, now we, we will actually see with this linkage of uh, flux and with this induced EMF, what actually happens. Now, before going to that point, we will try to understand because we will be using these terms a lot uh, in induced EMF, uh, flux linkage, and the basis of all this is inductance. So, what is an inductance of a coil? And uh, from that point, we will try to analyze how this inductance is relating to all these flux linkage as well as the voltage EMF induced. Now, can anyone tell me what is the basic? Understanding of an inductance of a coil. Right? L. Usually we denote the inductance. Oh, sorry? Summary? Sir, 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 just mutually decoupled coil. Yeah. Sir, N phi by I1. N. No, I'm not asking for formula. So, what does this physically mean, the inductance of a coil? Let's say uh, flux is passing through the coil, some kind of flux linkage. Like flux linkage with the number of turns. Flux linkage with the... Hello? Flux linkage is already uh, taking into account of the turns. Sir, the fl flux linkage due to current flowing through it. Exactly. So, when you are passing a current through a coil, flux... Uh, the flux is being linked with the coil. Flux linkage means, flux is different, flux linkage is different. Flux linkage means, let's say flux is passing through a coil with n number of turns. So, through all the turns, the flux is linked. One second. So, yeah. So, if there are n number of turns and let's say phi is the flux passing through that, uh, that coil, n phi, uh, the turns multiplied by the flux is called the linkage. Now, for a given current, and we also know the flux linkage. The, uh, the total flux linkage with the coil for a current passing through it is called the inductance. Now, as uh, one of our uh, students said, uh, uh, I'm trying to represent that in terms of mathematical uh, formula. So, L, sorry, yeah, L is equals to. 
total number of terms total flux linkage we will try to write in terms of uh, horse mass then we will uh, try to convert it into turns and flux flux linkage divided by the total current so yeah exactly now let's say this is the primary side of the transformer right now uh, i am trying to flow a current of i1 here and according to right hand thumb rule so can anyone tell me uh, what is the direction of the flux is it anti clockwise or clockwise clockwise yeah it is clockwise generated how it clockwise is, right so if my four fingers are uh, showing you the direction of current my the thumb will directly uh, show the direction of the flux generated now the current is in this direction flux should flow to the uh, towards uh, uh, towards the roof now the path provided will directly show you that the direction of flux will be clockwise direction so this is the direction of the flux now yeah now seeing that the formula l is equals to n phi by i flux linkage is number of turns multiplied by flux now to calculate l1 number of turns in the primary winding is n1 and the flux generated uh, we can call it as phi1 here total flux linkage and current passing through the coil one is one now there uh, here an interesting thing happens so what what that is is flux will always find a lower reluctance path to complete its path so we need to provide a closed path for that flux so that it can complete its path so it will always choose the lower reluctance path if if you provide two paths to the flux and which path is having lower reluctance but reluctance you can say it as a analogous to resistance which path is offering less resistance the flux will take that path as well that that is the path it will take so here the core is having a lower reluctance compared to the air around it so obviously the flux will choose through the core but however one second yeah however within this core the main flux will flow there is no doubt about it but there is some amount of flux that will take the a path so that flux we are not utilizing it we there is some amount of flux that is leaking out of the core so we call that as leakage flux a simple diagram you uh, can show you so let's say this is main flux 5m 5m and here some flux will take its closed path here phi l so here we are losing some flux some flux is getting leaked so that is we call as a leakage flux now what what we talked about inductance inductance is nothing but total flux linkage total flux linkage means it is summation of main flux as well as the leakage flux so let's say main flux we are representing by let's say phi this one let's say phi 1 phi m1 that is main flux plus phi l1 that is the leakage flux so these two summation of these two flux will constitute the total flux linkage now let's let's substitute that that in the formula l1 is equals to n1 into phi m1 plus phi l1 divided by i1 now i'm just dividing it like taking out of the uh, bracket n1 phi1 by i1 plus n1 phi l1 by i1 now if you see the second uh, term of this expression will be always uh, related to the leakage inductance now this entire term is inductance but this term is the leakage inductance right now i will try to write that as l1 is equals to uh, n1 phi m1 divided by i1 plus l l1 so l l1 we will try to uh, treat it as a leakage inductance from the primary coil so this is a important relation where we can see how the turns how the flux linkage and how the current passing through it and is everything related to the inductance so it's a simple uh, simple concept by using simple concept we were able to uh, derive the expression for the inductance now let's say we have two coils now yeah we, you, you can already see here uh, we have uh, two coils uh, here in the uh, figure uh, now i'm trying to uh, i'm trying to relate the concept of mutual inductance here so what exactly uh, if i place a secondary coil 
and uh, let's understand the concept of mutual inductance now for that just i'll draw quickly this is n1 and some current is flowing through i1 so this is n2 right he, if there are two coils uh, let's say we are seeing a two coils here now phi m1 that is the main flux that is generated by the primary this phi m1 will link with the secondary coil too that we will call as a mutual inductance because that flux m1 is not generated by the n2 but however it is linking with the n2 that's why we have said they are magnetically coupled and there exist there exist a phenomenon called mutual inductance now mutual inductance is also inductance only but how we are representing it so same thing total flux linkage here it is uh, represented as m21 total flux linkage with n2 coil that's what mutual is n2 coil due to the current flowing through the primary coil that is i1 here in the subscript you can see m21 two is flux linkage with the second coil the one represents the which coil is carrying the current here the first coil is carrying the current that's why the subscript will be one always m21 now how much is the flux linking with the n2 can anyone tell it's simple n2 from the figure you can say phi m1 is linking with n2 n2 phi m1 divided by the current flowing through it. that is the current responsible for that that is i1 now m21 i just n21 is equals to n2 phi m1 divided by i1 yeah now yeah we we, we understand the concept of self inductance and mutual inductance for a coil single coil now let's pass current through the second coil as well let's let's make it a bit more complex it's simple uh, only now uh, i1 current is flowing in i1 now let's pass current through n2 as well so let's say in this figure i am trying to pass i2 through n2 same discussion it's just a replica of whatever we discussed today so i am not discussing in detail about it but i i can write some formulas which you all are familiar familiar with phi 2t let's say this is total flux in the first one let's say it represents a phi 1t total total flux linkage so phi 2t will be so looking at the first expression we can say phi m1 plus phi l1 that is main flux plus linkage flux same thing here phi m2 plus phi l2 that is what main flux in the secondary coil and the leakage flux in the secondary coil now i am representing this substituting this in l2 that is the inductance of the second coil phi m2 into n2 divided by the current flowing through the secondary coil plus n2 phi l2 divided by the i2 so this is the leakage inductance with respect to the second coil now l2 is equals to phi m2 n2 by i2 we will just represent the leakage as l l2 right yeah now we are able to achieve at the expressions of inductance for both primary and secondary and uh, yeah i'll just try trying the uh, trying to write the equations here so that we can we can get an expression for mutual as well n1 phi1 by i1 plus ll1 and l2 is n2 phi m2 by i2 plus ll2 and apart from this we also have the mutual inductance right m21 at the top right of the screen you can see m21 n2 phi m1 by i1 so similarly what is the self inductance uh, mutual inductance in the second coil in the first coil due to the current passing through the uh, current passing through the coil number 2 that is i2 n1 phi m2 divided by i2 so these are all four equations very important equations to understand the concept of inductance inductance will have two kinds that is self inductance within the same coil mutual inductance due to the Uh, other coils uh, linkage so these are the four equations now if you if you closely observe equation uh, number 3 and 4 let's give 
numbers with equations 1, 2, 3 and 4. From equation 3 and 4, we know one thing. Flux, what is the basic uh, understanding of the flux? Let's say MMF, there is MMF linking with, uh, 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 there is MMF linkage that is NI and we know the reluctance and how we can calculate the flux. Can anyone say the relation between flux, MMF and reluctance? Flux. And uh, flux is equal to MMF by reluctance. Yeah, exactly. So flux, we know that we can write it as MMF by reluctance. So MMF is nothing but NI. Uh, multiplication of turns with respect to the duct. One second, someone has joined. Okay. Now, let's try to replace the flux uh, in equation 3 and 4 with this relation we know. That is, MMF is equals to uh, NI and uh, reluctance. We will replace the flux term with this equation and, and we will see something interesting will happen. Now, that we will see here. M21, I'm taking e equation 3, that is N2 divided by I1, and uh, let's replace someone has joined here. Yeah. And N2 by I1, I have taken N2 by I1 separately, and phi M1. Phi M1 is the main flux in the first coil, right? So, in, if, if I want to uh, calculate the uh, MMF in the first coil, it is nothing but N1 I1 divided by reluctance. Reluctance is same. It's the same core on uh, the both coils are wanted. So reluctance is same. Now it is I1, I1 will get cancelled and N1, N2 by reluctance. That is what M21 we got. And let's do it for M12. M12 I have taken N1 by I2 outside and phi M2 is the main flux in the secondary coil. So it is N2, I2 divided by reluctance. Now again, I2, I2, same, cancel. And N1, N2 by R. Now, what did you notice here? If there are two coils and you have given some different currents, even though you have given different currents flowing in those two coils, having different turns ratio, the mutual inductance between these two coils is always remains same. If you see the expression for M12 and also M21 is same. That's why we don't go with these subscripts of 2, 1 and 1, 2. It will be confusion. Anyhow, they are having the same value. We will try to represent with single term that is M. Someone has joined again. Okay. So, yeah, this is how we can say that the mutual inductance of two coils I will always remain same irrespective of the current flowing through them. So now, now we started the discussion with what? We, we, whether we can arrive at the equivalent circuit of the transformer that, that can be made or we can, we can, somehow we will we have to arrive at that equivalent circuit, the, this equivalent circuit which we discussed in the first slide using inductance concepts. Now we understood, uh, yes, Swapnil, you want to say something? Yes, sir. So, but in the formula of mutual inductance, uh, M21 and, and uh, M12, yeah. uh, there is I1 and I2. But in the uh, final formula, M21 is equal to M12. And yes. there is no current. No, yeah. Uh, yes. If, if there is a current in, in equation 3 and 4, you see the current is there, I1 and I2. That is dependent on the uh, main flux, that is phi M1. And I2 will be dependent on the phi M2. But when you write the flux in terms of MMF by reluctance, you can cancel out the current terms. It is just a representation that mutual inductance will only depend on the turns ratio uh, and the reluctance of the core, but not on individual current passing. E even though you, you can pass water any amount of current, I1 or I2, when you calculate the mutual inductance, it will always be dependent on the turns ratio as well as reluctance of the core. Yeah. Sir, so, uh, sir, so uh, it is totally independent of current. Current current terms will get cancelled out. Current terms will already get, uh, I mean, they're already taken care of while calculating the mutual reluctance. If you're calculating uh, mutual reluctance for a coil uh, between any two coils, 
you can calculate using current also for calculating current what you need you need flux as well right while calculating flux you need again the value of current there so that's where the current terms are being taken care of that's that's what the inference you have to develop from this uh, get from this uh, formula yes that's sir perfect yeah current terms are already taken care of because current terms when you divide the total flux linkage with the current flow passing through the coil responsible for that coil the flux linkage here is already having the current term so to calculate flux you need current definitely current can't be neglected but the current uh, flux linkage and also the current flow interval will get cancelled out so that's how the current is being taken care of that's what it means so yeah Uh, so moving forward, uh, now we will try to arrive at this equivalent circuit of transformer using this inductance concepts. Now uh, let's say uh, now I I won't be drawing this uh, 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 transformer and two two kinds of uh, uh, turns ratio n one and n two like that, but we will try to draw it in a simple way that is like this. Mm, yeah, so this one is n one. And this is N two. Let's say this uh, this one is having L one inductance and this is L two inductance. And anyhow, the mutual inductance is always same. That is, I'm denoting with the M. Now, one important thing when it comes to magnetic circuits is dot convention. So you you might have heard about it, and it is very important to understand this dot convention because this dot convention is uh, it, it is useful. In this coupled coils, so how these dots are connected? Dot, you don't have to confuse or get confused about the dots. It's just polarity. What is the uh, uh, polarity? Uh, instantaneous polarity. You can say at that particular point of time, what is the polarity at that instant? So that is what we will uh, mention with the dot. We will see uh, clearly what a dot exactly means. Uh, now, before that, <clears throat> to to get the dot convention, uh, let's try to pass. Alternating current through uh, one of the coil. Uh, why I choose specifically alternating current means so because to get a time varying flux linkage, I am trying to uh, pass the alternating current. So why should I need to get a time varying flux linkage? Any anyone can tell me. So that's the EMF can be induced on the other side. Yeah, right. So the induced EMF. Will only be uh, generated or induced when we have a flux that is changing with respect to time. So it's it's at about d phi by dt, and uh, the flux will get linked with the number of turns n n phi. And if we differentiate it with over time, and we will get the EMF induced. So in order to get a time varying flux, what is needed? In order to get such kind of time varying flux, we need to pass a current that is varying with respect to time. So it's it's all linked. I'm just writing it here. I need a flux that is varying with the time. So, yeah. So in order to get this current, uh, this kind of time varying flux, I need to pass current that is varying with the time. That is I of t that is varying with the time. To get a time varying current, I need to supply that winding with such a voltage that is varying with the time. So this is all link, linked with. So once I get a time varying voltage, and I will get a time varying current that will uh, generate a time varying flux. The time varying flux will will be responsible for for the induced EMF in the second coil. Now, yeah. So <clears throat> my flux uh, is basically time varying. That is phi of t. And let's let's try to write the formula for uh, here. Okay. N two okay. Anyway, well, let's try. I will try to draw a transformer. Okay. Now we we are, we are trying to understand the dot convention. How how we are going to decide uh, which which uh, which place we have to place the dot on? What is actually the polarity and like that? Okay. Oh, okay. Let's let's say I'm trying to. Sorry. I'm trying to give uh, alternating voltage to primary uh, winding that is V one of T, and 
and here uh, the current flowing will be i1 of t because of this alternating current this is the current flowing through the winding and i will be able to generate a clockwise flux in the clockwise direction that is varying with the time phi n1 of t right there is a main flux in the primary coil now <clears throat> yeah now let's say this is coil secondary side it is open but i am trying to connect a load here such that i am providing a path for the secondary current to flow uh, so if if we connect a load and we close the circuit then only current will flow now the polarity this is what we are trying to decide here what should be the polarity at this side so it should be plus minus or minus or plus so this will decide the dot convention uh, so this is what we are trying to uh, analyze here what should be the polarity of the plus and minus uh, anyone anyone can tell me what should be the polarity this is case a that is plus plus minus. minus so any any reason behind that why it should be plus minus so that it can, it will oppose the uh, primary uh, flux so according to the lens law it will be oppose the main flux sir okay what will oppose the main flux you are correct but what will oppose the main flux what the secondary what primary flux sir primary current is produced there's a flux that the main flux will will oppose the same flux yeah so uh, it's like a uh, lens law it says that the effect should oppose the cause always the effect should oppose the cause so here uh, the effect is due to this primary flux the emf emf is being induced in the secondary so the polarity of the induced voltage should oppose the cause for which it is due so that's the law now let's say if it is minus and plus let's say it is minus and plus so we know if it is plus here current will be going through the this, this direction and leaving through the minus so the reason it is if it is plus minus i'm just saying let's erase this one for a bit yeah so if it is plus and minus the current will go through and like this and if you see what is the direction of the current here now the current direction is like this my flux will uh, flux generated in secondary coil will be towards down that that, that means this this kind of flux i am generating it is phi m2 but you see that the both fluxes in the core someone has joined yeah the flux the both fluxes within the core are in the same direction they both are aiding each other but according to the law the effect should always oppose the cause for which it is due right so this can't be the direction now let's take it okay let's take it as plus minus uh now plus means uh, the direction will be uh, reversed and it it enters the plus and it will lose the minus so this is what the new direction of the current will be now the, the correct current direction is this one the flux generated will be towards this direction and it is in anti clockwise direction flux m2 now these both are opposing in direction and the law is satisfied so everywhere whatever might be the condition anywhere in this uh, electrical engineering the basic law should always be valid basic laws are valid anywhere so using that we uh, so that the reason we decide what should be the polarity at the load side so that, that's how now as as uh, our uh, attendees also said that it the flux generated by the secondary coil should oppose the flux generated in the main coil so that's how it should be now yeah so <clears throat> that's it uh, usually uh, see it is plus it is minus and when uh, it is plus minus in one cycle but when is it when is alternating it is minus and plus then it will be minus and plus here so always this polarity is keep on changing so instead of saying plus here minus here we use we use the convention of dot so that's how uh, dot represents what it represents the polarity of the terminal a because i have uh, mentioned this uh, dot at the polarity a right so it represents the polarity of the a terminal at a given time so at that instant that is the polarity of the time so the uh, the same polarity uh, exists here also 
Now, that, that, that's what it actually means. So, if, if you are saying uh, the polarity of A terminal at a given instant is this one, the same polarity also exists at the other side of this uh, se uh, section of the uh, circuit as well. Now, this is simple. As you said, it's based on the simple principle. And now, let's try to arrive at the KVL equations. Now, we have all the concepts for uh, uh, writing the KVL equations of, uh, of a transformer. And let's try to get at the KVL equations for someone has joined. Okay. For primary and secondary side of a transformer. Okay. Uh, let's say this is the transformer, uh, the top one, the top figure only. Uh, let's say we have uh, no leakages here. No winding, uh, let, let's say we, uh, winding has a resistances, R1 and R2. Uh, we can lump, lump them into a single resistance. If there are uh, no leakage resistance and all, we can go for the uh, derivation. So it's just very simple. We will we will try to look at each, each and every step. So first we will look at the primary side and then we will go to the secondary side now if we see at the uh, diagram we can see there is a voltage source here that is supply voltage and there is a uh, primary winding in which again the voltage will be induced because of the inductance so uh, so here primary in the primary also there will be induced voltage because primary coil uh, we, have, we are subjecting to a time bearing flux here uh, time bearing and that induced voltage supplies the uh, so balance and supply voltage so i'm just writing trying to draw equivalent circuit in the primary side so let's say this is uh i, I can't draw plus or minus here this is a supply voltage let's say this instant this is positive and my uh, negative and uh, this is the primary side resistance that is r1 and yeah uh, we are at this uh, part and here we have the primary primary coil now because of the main flux in the primary coil there will be a voltage induced in it it's it's again the basic law whenever a time varying flux uh, passes through it uh, uh, the coil because our primary coil is subjected to that kind of time varying flux uh, induced voltage will be there now let's say what we will write it as j omega l1 I1. Because of the current I1, and due to this inductance, we are uh, having this uh, voltage. Usually, uh, in this electrical engineering, we represent JW as uh, d by dt. So, yeah, because you know the voltage formula is uh, L di by dt. So, if we represent this d by dt as J double, uh, J omega, we can write it as J omega Li. So, can someone has joined? Yeah. So, so yeah, this is this is a voltage source here, and we already discussed uh, because of uh, the current flowing in the I two uh, because of current flowing in the secondary coil also there will be a mutual inductance within the primary coil. So that discussion will be dead. So there will be mutual inductance that is referring to our primary uh, side of the transformer. So that will also we have represent as a voltage source. So if we see that and we have to represent as a voltage source that is j omega d by dt that is because of the mutual inductance due to the current flowing through the secondary coil that we, we, we saw in the earlier discussion now we are just trying to represent those inductances that are generating this voltages in the primary side so this completes the primary side equivalent circuit now uh, what what should be the polarity of these two it should be plus minus or minus plus that we have discussed in the top section. So based on the, the uh, based on the polarity in the secondary side, that it, it, we will be deciding the polarity of this J omega m i two. Now, if you see carefully, polarity of J omega m i two. If current is entering through the dot, the other dot also become, uh, becomes positive. Now, if you see here, let's say dot is here. And we want to uh, get, uh, we, we are trying to uh, arrive at the uh, polarity here. So this side we are already having, and uh, now here we are trying to arrive at this dot polarity. So this dot polarity. So in this dot uh, polarity, we are seeing that current is entering like this, 
and whenever current entering at that instant it is positive and the same dot polarity we are trying to find here here also the polarity will be positive so the bottom side let's say this is a b and this is also a and b so this is the bottom side of the coil so mutual inductance will be existing here at the bottom side so it's simple because of the dot polarity here it is plus as well so here also it's bottom side this is a b same side this is the section we are trying to visualize so this will be the minus and this will be the plus let's say if the current is like this if the, uh, the current is leaving means here it will be minus then it will be minus here as well so that's a simple dot convention so we are uh, we have arrived at the equivalent circuit for the primary side and uh, in the primary side we have the supply voltage and the voltage generated due to the inductance and the voltage generated due to the mutual inductance now can anyone tell me what are the uh, components in the secondary side because secondary side we don't have voltage source but we have a uh, load there and also coil there and i'm also I, i'm i'm trying to uh, draw the secondary side equivalent circuit and you also try to solve from your side i am sure that there will be two voltage sources and there is a resistance and load here load will also have some voltage drop right now what are the values of this so this is easy this is r2 and what is this voltage j that is caused due to the inductance in the second side main l2 i2 okay now plus minus same polarity here as well and here okay here it is sorry sorry this current is entering right this is the final one this is plus here so this will be plus here as well okay yeah this is due to mutual uh, mutual part uh, so yeah this is the j omega l2 i2 that is due to the main inductance it is self inductance of the second coil and the bottom voltage will be due to the j omega m i1 that is due to the mutual inductance due to the current flowing through the primary coil that we have discussed same thing is a replica in the secondary side as well now yeah the same polarity as someone has joined yeah uh, yeah same polarity as as in the uh, primary side mutual inductance voltage uh, polarity now if you look at the load here let's say we are representing as a z z2 some kind of voltage will drop across the Uh, load we will call it as a v2 so that it will be analogous to the primary side v1 v2 we have and also the voltage sources now can 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 someone help me by uh, writing the kvl equation at primary side it's simple now this is the primary side and this is secondary side can someone help me with the kvl equations here now v1 is equals to yeah i1 r1 yeah So I one we have to assume that. Thank you. We have plus. to assume that I one. Yeah, I one R one plus J W L one I one. Exactly. And one more term. Um, minus uh, J W L one. Yes. Exactly. Correct. Now let's try to write the cable equation for the secondary as well. Now let's say the current flowing through this is I two and. Starting with J omega L two I two minus J omega M I one plus I two R two plus R two is equal to zero. With this two KVL equations, we can actually arrive at the equivalent circuit of the transformer which we saw in the first slide. So. uh let me take, let me take another slide here which so that yeah yeah <clears throat> i'm just writing the kvl equations quickly here so k 
KVL equations in the primary side that is V1 is equals to I1 R1 plus J omega L1 I1 minus J omega L I2 and the secondary side equation J omega L2 I2 minus J omega M I1 uh, plus I2 R2 plus uh, B2 I2 R2 is already there sorry is equals to 0 and the uh, now, now if you see that okay I2 R2 is there plus V2 is equals to 0 I2 R2 is the drop across that and V2 is the drop across the load and yeah now from these equations we will try to replace the inductance parts with the formulas which we saw in the previous slide now in this slide we saw that the l1 and l2 equation 1 and 2 we can see that l1 is self inductance uh, that is l1 phi m1 by i1 plus leakage inductance and l2 is n2 phi m2 by i2 plus ll2 that is leakage inductance and i'm just trying to write those equations here l1 is equals to n1 phi m1 divided by i1 plus ll1 now if you try to simplify this i'm trying to multiply and divide by n2 and so that n2 phi m1 divided by i1 plus ll1 will be there here now can someone tell me what this bracket n2 phi m1 by i1 represents N2 is the secondary terms. Mutual. Sorry? So mutual inductance. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It is the mutual inductance term because it is linking with the secondary terms. The flux linkage or the flux generated the primary winding phi m1 linking with the secondary due to the current flow in the primary coil. It is, it is, it is nothing but the mutual inductance. Now, if N1 by N2 is a turns ratio, we assumed it to be A, that is represented by A, and this term is M. Now, A M plus L L1. Now, L1 we got, we rewrote the L1 expression as like this, and we will rewrite the similarly L2 as this one. If you do L2 also, you will get M1 divided by A, because there will be N2 will be in the numerator there itself in the L2 equation. And yeah. Now, these two we will try to replace in this one and two equations and we will substitute it and we will simplify it and i'm not doing the entire derivation but i will try to give the final equations what we will get b1 is equals to i1 r1 one second someone has joined okay yeah it's j omega a m i1 minus i2 by a plus i i will strongly recommend you all to solve this uh, in your free time and tally with me because these are uh, this is like nothing but a sim simply substituting and simplifying it this is the primary equation we'll get now secondary equation will be j omega a m plus a square ll2 multiplied by the current in flowing in that branch j omega a m i1 plus i2 by a a square r2 plus i2 by a a square z2 is equal to 0. Now these two are the equations which we will simply get if you replace the L1 and L2 in the equations, uh, the bottom uh, top two equations. Now, looking at this, let's try to represent that in a equivalent circuit form. Now, just take this equation, equation one first. There is a voltage source that is V1, right? And V1 is equals to what? There is a drop across I1, R1. I am representing that as a R1 here. And I1 current current is flowing through the that branch. And next one we have I1 minus I2 by A. So this is a combination of two currents. Maybe that branch is sharing with uh, two branch uh, two loops. 
we will come to that part later and what is the term responsible for i1 alone here j omega l1 now i can represent that uh, easily is omega l1 means inductance right so wh what is this j omega l1 and the same current is flowing through i1 and now we are we have come across a j omega am there is a mutual inductance term that is sharing the branch with two loops which is the loop one should be having a current of i1 and the loop two should be having current of i2 by a so same by using simple network analysis concepts we can say that it should be in parallel with this branch and where if this current is i1 what should be the this current should be i2 yeah opposite side because i1 minus i2 th those should be uh, opposite to each other that is i2 by a what is this branch j omega a n to so this mutual inductance now this primary side e equation is complete now coming to the left side uh, the sorry the secondary side of the equation let's see what are all the only terms responsible for i2 now we already know that i2 by a is flowing here and okay I2 by A is flowing in A square R2. I2 by A, a is flowing A square Z2. Now, let's say this is A square R2. And I, I, A square Z2 is also there. And if you see here, someone has joined. Once again, yeah. And uh, here, A square J omega LL2 is also there, which is having I2 by A. Now, I am representing that as this one and j omega a square l l2 and one more branch it is a square z2 that i am representing as a load a square z2 now the only term left is j omega am i2 by a minus another j omega am i1 so there is nothing but i2 by a minus i1 it is already taken care of with this branch now same thing, it is I2 by A flowing and I1 in the opposite direction. That branch is shared by these two loops. Now, this isn't this the exact equivalent circuit we saw in the first slide here? If you see voltage source, this is the primary side inductances and reactances. And this is the magnetizing reactance. And secondary side reactances and resistances along with the load refer to the primary side. So, that's what the A square represents here. So, we, are, we have arrived at the exact equivalent circuit of the transformer by just using the circuit analysis concepts as well as the inductance concepts. So this is very important before moving directly into AC machines because AC machines nothing but windings. There are windings, we are giving some supply and some flux is being generated and it's cutting the another winding and some in voltage is being induced in that winding. So all are this linked and to understand them more clearly, we should have very good and basic understanding of what exactly happening in the circuit and what, exa what exactly inductance refers to, what is mutual inductance and how we can arrive at this equivalent circuit by just using their uh, network, network analysis as well as circuit analysis concepts. So you can see this is the equivalent circuit of the transformer that is being referred to the primary side. Now, this is, this is where I want to end the uh, discussion of this concept. So, before moving to a numerical section, I also want to uh, discuss a small concept of energy storage in the coil. So, that is also uh, important for us to before solving this uh, second uh, numericals. A simple concept. I will just try to finish it quickly so that we will be focusing more on the uh, numericals now. Now, energy store, uh, you know, Inductance is an energy storage element. Inductance and capacitance is an energy storage element, while the resistance is always an energy dissipative element. So we can't store any energy uh, in, in the, uh, resistance, but we can store some energy in inductance uh, as well as capacitor. So once again, so we will be seeing the basic discussion, uh, which is related to the energy storage in the couple coils. Let's say there are two coils and uh, we will pass current to the uh, a coil and we will see how uh, the energy is being stored. Let's say, uh, let's let's not take the secondary coil uh, yet. Let's say we have a single coil and yeah, 
this is a very uh, single coil and uh, let's say i have passed some current and let's say this coil is having uh, inductance l now yeah this is already we discussed it and uh, it will be equivalent to another voltage source and this is the supply voltage time varying and plus minus and this is the current and plus minus l di by dt yeah this is a basic thing there is a voltage and there is a l di by dt and this is how uh, our simple equation would look like now we can see with respect to source I, I have not written the resistance here just to uh, show the representation of how the power is being supplied to the so supplied by the source and the power is being taken someone has joined yeah so if you see with respect to source you can see the current is leaving the positive terminal with respect to source so here this positive the current is leaving and uh, the current with respect to the load uh, let's say it's considered as a load uh, the current is entering here now whenever a current is leaving the system we, we will say that the energy or the power is being supplied by that uh, branch now here we are seeing with respect to source the energy is supplied by it and with respect to the load we can see the energy is being absorbed by it so that that that, that is how the energy is being absorbed by the inductance and that is how the energy is being stored within the inductor and let's say we, we are trying to write uh, instantaneous power at that instant so that is nothing but the multiplication of voltage and current now if you see the inductors uh, let's say this we will mark these terminals as a and b now a and b terminals are there now with respect to a and b polarity we see this current is entering through a and uh, leaving through b so that is it is uh, absorbing power now can can I'm just quickly writing the power absorbed. Absorbed is equals to uh, by which one? By this inductance. By this inductance is equals to dp. That is a change in the power absorbed by. And because everything here it is time varying, so we have to consider this time varying concept as well. Now voltage into current. What is the voltage here? This L dI by dt. Multiplied by the current. Okay. Now we got the dp here, and uh, if you want to get the energy absorbed, energy is nothing but in time dt. We have to, uh, with respect to time, we have to in, uh, integrate the power. We will get the energy absorbed, right? Energy absorbed by L. So yeah, is equals to d omega uh, d dw. And uh, it's nothing but di by dt into i multiplied by dt. So dt dt will get cancelled, and what we have arrived at dw is equals to l i di. So yeah, if 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 we integrate this dw uh, dw integrated, and yeah, l integrate i. Di. No, no. Uh, the current will change from zero to its maximum value, right? It should be zero to maximum value i. That is how the current will change. Now, what is the energy, or you can say uh, the energy absorbed will be integral i di will be i squared by two. If you multiply, uh, if you substitute the limits, you can get half l i square. So this we already know. Uh, it's very basic concept of. Uh, energy stored energy stored in a coil that is half l i square now this is with respect to uh, single coil now if if we want to look at the energy stored in the coupled coils we just have to i am just trying to represent it uh, v1 of t because now there is another coil which is being coupled with okay this is the coupled coil i am talking about this is the dot convention uh, now, let's say there is also another source here v2 of t that is also delivering uh, current to this coil and uh, there is already a current here i1 and this is i2 we have, we have just assumed the current of i2 uh, such that a source is supplying to this so that we can say energy is being absorbed by that coil now yeah uh, now we can see now we are just trying to uh, represent in terms of voltage sources because that's what we did in the previous discussion also now since there is a another coil 
the additional voltage source will also comes into picture which is nothing but the mutual inductance uh, voltage now yeah this is the supply voltage this is plus minus and uh, in the primary side we will have uh, due to the main flux flowing that is l di1 by dt that is the uh, main one and we will have another voltage source that is m that is due to the current flowing through the secondary uh, coil so yeah this one Yeah, sorry for that. Okay, now uh, what should be the polarity of this M di2 uh, di2 by dt that we will see in one second. Now, yeah, th in the second we said I'm trying to have uh, draw the circuit, and here also we will have two voltage sources, and uh, this is the uh, supply voltage in the V2 of t plus minus, and we will have same polarity of plus minus that is L2. Di2 by dt that is a uh, self one this L1 Di1 by dt and this one will have mutual part M this is due to the primary current Di1 by dt now if you see the current is we have assumed the current direction here uh, leaving this part and entering this part and here the discussion in which we have this is entering this part so uh, that's how uh, if the uh, current is entering in this point uh, we assume this as dot and this is what plus and minus if it is entering it should be plus now since we have assumed this point as leaving at this point so whatever polarity at this point we will have the same polarity at this point as well so since it is leaving we have to take it as a negative at the bottom side we will have negative same polarity as here as well same polarity here as well now yeah it all depends on the uh, direction of current you are assuming so that's why if if, if you assume this this direction of current and this will be minus plus if it is this direction this will be plus and minus so that you will always have to take care of but you just have to see the direction of current and if it is uh, leaving uh, if it is entering that uh, with respect to that point it is plus and if it is leaving with respect to that point it is minus so that's what we have arrived at and can no now we just have to calculate the power Okay, it's not copying. I will just uh, write the equation for it. Instantaneous power absorbed. Now it is. Uh, we know that P is equals to V into I. Now P is equals to voltage. Now we will have two terms here because there are two currents flowing here. Now looking at the first uh, section, we will see. Uh, L1 di1 by dt plus m uh, d2 uh, di2 by dt. That that is uh, that is being the power absorbed here, right? I'm just trying to write here. It is L1 di1 by dt plus m di2 by dt. So this is because of i1 v. This is v and this is i1 plus secondary side L2. Di2 by dt plus m di1 by dt. This is uh, due to the current uh, i2. Now power we have. What will be the energy absorbed in time dt? We have to uh, multiply the power with dt and p dt. And yeah, it's simple multiplication. I am just writing the simplified expression. L1 i1 di1 plus m i1 di2 you please solve with me and also check uh, the expression with me because i might do some mistakes and l i2 di2 and m i2 di1 these are the four expressions simple we have we have multiplied with uh, uh, dt here now d omega is equals to l1 i1 i'm just simplifying this expression further I am writing the both uh, inductance terms here L2 I2 
di2 and n if the, if you take n common and it is i1 di2 plus i2 di1 it is nothing but how we can write it it's a differential formula it is differential notation d of i1 i2 so okay now we got energy stored expression here energy stored or absorbed in the uh, by both these coils uh, couple coils we got the expression but in order to get a absolute expression we have to integrate this over time uh, with the limits we know and how how uh, like how this current might vary now if you take coil 1 the current will go from 0 to i1 and if we take coil 2 uh, the current will go from 0 to i2 that's the range of uh, i1 and i2 these limits are only useful uh, while integrating right now the total energy storage or energy absorbed you can call it any anything so if you integrate it 0 to i1 this one but uh, this is just to 0 to i1 you will get it here and 0 to i2 you will have and because this is i1 i2 product i1 i2 you will get now what will be the expression for it half l1 i1 square plus half l2 i2 square and this is m this is i1 i2 it's a constant there is nothing else it's a constant we'll get and this is what the expression for the energy storage now there is something i want to mention a uh, small point here it should be it could be plus or minus so why because here here we got the plus polarity only because it is plus here only because the direction we are assumed to be in this way that's why it is plus if it is if there is some other direction or like this and the polarity might reverse like minus and plus and that's the only simple thing you have to keep in mind so what is the direction of current based on that you will get the direction of the uh, you will get the polarity of this uh, plus and minus here so yeah so yeah that's it uh, these are the basic concepts uh, we want to be very uh, strong in and we want to be very clear about it, these concepts what is the energy storage in the couple coils and before that the basic understanding of inductances mutual inductance and inductance and and also the uh, equivalent circuit what's happening in the uh, transformer so with that let's step into the uh, sol uh, solving the numericals and i want everyone to pick up uh, pick up their pen and paper with them and try to solve along with me and this will be very important for you and very useful for you yes uh, raja uh, c hello raja c you want to say something okay Uh, anyone wants to talk, uh, they can unmute themselves and talk, no problem. Sir, uh, I have a doubt regarding sign, sign changes value, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, which one? Which one here? The polarity? Uh, yes, sir. In the secondary coil, sir. Sir, one where, uh, sir, there is there are two circuits, sir. Yes. Sir, this is the one circuit where the uh, voltage uh, source value, it is expressed in, in terms of L and DI by DT. Yeah. And, and sir, uh, there is one other, another circuit uh, where they were expressed in J omega, L1, I1, yeah. J omega. Yes. Sir, but the direction is different. Like uh, plus minus is same, but current direction is different in two circuits. In which circuit you are talking about? Uh, in this circuit, sir. Uh, okay. This one. Uh, this one. And, and, and this, this one, yes, sir. Yes. Yes, okay. No, if you see here, uh, the direction of this I one, two, sir. I, I, two, two, sir. I2 is different in the both circuits, right? Mm, yes, sir. I2 is, uh, because because of this current direction only, we have got this di uh, polarity different. Minus plus, it is plus minus. Yes, sir. Mm. Yeah, Adish, I will share the PPT with you. Actually, I will share this PPT as well as the recording with you uh, everything will reach you no worries yeah uh, is the doubt is your doubt here because of the current directionally the polarity is changed here okay sir okay sir yeah, yeah we will solve a problem on that uh, we will it will be more clear for you uh, yeah so uh, so i uh, everyone got their uh, uh, pen and paper with them so here we see two coils are, are given let's study the question first Two coils of an ideal transformer. Ideal transformer means there are no uh, losses in that. Uh, 
we are labeling those uh, ideal transformer as uh, a b and also as c d uh, we can see the both uh, terminals here so one of these two coils have 300 turns and 200 turns so n1 is 300 n2 is 200 uh, now terminals a of coil a b is marked with the dot we can see the dot symbol there now self inductance is given that is for the coil one uh, is 3.6 henry and uh, it is said that the two coils are connected in series as shown uh, if you know series means the same current will flow through uh, the same uh, the coil if it is uh, uh, if it is placed in the series the same current will flow through that's the meaning of series uh, now if one more thing is if uh, a kind of flux is generated in the coil one the same uh, direction will be the uh, flux direction in the coil two because both are in series the both fluxes should aid together because there is no uh, because they are not magnetically uh, so el electrically isolated anymore they are electrically connected so that's the meaning there so which terminal of the coil cd should be marked with the dot so should c be the dot or should d be the dot we have to decide based on the given data now as we discussed uh, in the discussion uh, whenever we want to know the uh, dot or the uh, convention in the other side we have to see where the current is entering and where the current is leaving in the primary side uh, let's say i am uh, trying to uh, solve this equation and let's say i am trying to pass some current some kind of uh, uh, let's say i am trying to uh, find the dc current because that doesn't matter if it's a series coil the ac we will have a time varying let's say i, I pass some current and I'm just trying to, yeah, I have passed some current here I and okay. Now the current will enter A and what will be the current direction? Like this, like this, like this, like this, right? And the same current will go like this, will come like this and will, and yeah, this is the direction of the current. Now, can someone tell me the direction of flux uh, produced by the primary coil direction? Is it uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise? Anti-clockwise. Anti. Anti. Yeah. So, these are the direction of, of the current and the flux will be towards downwards. And this will be the flux. And since it is a series connected, the flux generated in the secondary coil should be aiding or uh, opposing. Yeah, it should. Sorry. Opposing, sir. Uh, no, it's a series connected, right? It should be aiding, sir. Uh, in series coil, it should be aiding. So, let's say in this, at the aid. Sir, it should be opposing, sir. Uh, opposing current will uh, no. Let's say these two coils are magnetically uh, coupled but electrically isolated. Then the time varying uh, uh, the time varying flux due to the primary coil will induce voltage in the secondary coil when they are magnetically coupled. So they are not electrically coupled now. So if you, if I draw the circuit like this, and right now this is kind of. So right now, this is the kind of connection we are seeing here. This is A, and this is B, and this is D, and this is C. Uh, yeah. Now here it is A. This is series now. Whatever current flowing through and for flowing through, there is no uh, isolation between these two. They are already connected. So if some flux is generated in this uh, primary, and the same the direction will continue in the secondary as well. Now let's say this we current don't know the direction and uh, and let's say i want to generate a same flux in cd so uh, what i should tell you so yeah this is the direction of flux generated by the primary coil and this is anti clockwise uh, anti clockwise now the same current the same kind of flux should be generated in the secondary coil as well because they are series series connected the both flux should be aiding. Here it should be aiding only because they are series in a series manner. Now to generate that kind of flux, what should be the direction of current? 
it should be like this it should be the current direction should be like this then only i can able to generate a flux in that so that will aid aid both uh, now if you see this this should be the direction of current and this one and this one it should come like this and this go like this this is go like this and uh, is it yeah it should come like this yeah the flux in ab is anti clockwise and the flux in cd should also be anti clockwise because they both are in series so to get a anti clockwise flux in uh, uh, the uh, cd as well uh, the current should enter in the c yeah this is what and the current should enter at this instant and should leave at the d instant okay now here the current is uh, entering here and the current is leaving here and here the current is leaving and the current is leaving and the current will both try to uh, enter here and they will current, uh, try to come out of this v so this is how it should be this is how the current uh, directions in the diagram should be now if you can see at the a terminal the current is entering and the b terminal current is leaving now based on the series connection we have come to conclusion that current should enter at c and current should leave at d now at, at both a and c the current is entering and but b and d the current is leaving so if the dot is at a and the dot should be at c or d c, c. yeah d. it should be at c because whenever we place two dots on both sides looking at the uh, uh, terminal at the a if the current is leaving or entering at that instant the same uh, polarity will be uh, given to that other terminal where the current is entering or leaving since the current is leaving entering at the a uh, the dot should be placed at c because the current is also entering at the c terminal so a simple dot convention only uh, we just have to apply the series uh, uh, connection rule here since both are connected in series the flux generated in the cd should also aid the ab that's that's how we decided the direction of current here now uh, the data remains same for this question and we will look at the second question the data remains same so now let's read the question here uh, and let's suppose uh, we, are, we we are suppose that 150 volts rms uh, ac source is connected between a and b this set and coil cd is left open so okay so cd we are not giving any supply we are giving a supply to the ab now the two coils are still connected in series as shown in the figure and we have to calculate the voltage between terminals a and c okay we have to give a positive number as an answer now a and c we have to find the voltage let's i'm just simply drawing here it's just asking some kind of voltage is voltage difference is there between a and c and uh, whether it is plus minus or minus plus it's anything is vac this is what we, we have to find the polarity can be anything based on the direction we can see and okay for that how how can we solve it and okay 150 volts rms is given here okay we already have the voltage here and okay ac source uh, 150 volts that is rms uh, we have given and these are seriously connected okay now i am just writing the data we have n1 is equals to 300 and 2 is equals to 200 and v1 is equals to 150 volts and v2 we don't know and vac also we don't know see these are all series connected uh, now there is already a loop uh, formed here right let's say this is a positive and negative there is already a voltage uh, this is v2 and this is vac and there is already a kvl present here you can easily see that because they are all seriously connected and now to calculate the v2 we will uh, how can we calculate the v2 if you know the turns ratio it's very simple can anyone tell me formula sir ratio yeah turns ratio formula now n1 by n2 equal to v2 by n1 V1 by yeah n1 by n2 equals to V1 by V2. Yeah, V2. Uh, with that, uh, we can get n2 by n1 into V1. So it is 200 by 300 multiplied by V1. That is 150. So how much it is? 
100 volts now we know that v2 is equals to 100 volts and we know that uh, v1 is 150 and can how difficult it is to get vs it's simple kvl uh, okay this is plus minus I, I i'm trying to kvl in this loop and minus 150 plus vac plus v2 is equal to zero and vac is what i need is equals to 150 minus v2 v2 is 100 vat is 50 volts yeah it's simple it's just uh, we also decide that it is plus and minus because the po uh, polarity is 150 here and 100 here so obviously there should be a drop uh, in vac it's uh, 150 volts uh, 100 volts uh, in the v2 and vac should be uh, 50 volts that's uh, that's it uh, it's simple uh, we just calculate the v2 uh, using the turns relation and we applied the kcl we we can only apply uh, this uh, KVL uh, because it's series connected. There is already a loop form, a closed loop. That's why we got this uh, relation. If they are electrically isolated, we can't have this relation of uh, KVL. Yeah, moving to the next question, uh, we need to estimate the self inductance of coil CD. Uh, in Henry, we have to uh, calculate self inductance of coil CD. Self inductance of coil uh, AB is already given. How much is the value? It's 3.6 Henry. I'm just writing it here. L1. Let's say I'm taking L1 as a. Okay, I let A B only. A B is 3.6 Henry, and we are asked to find L C D. Okay. Now we know the turns ratio and also the inductance of a coil one. Uh, what's the relation between turns ratio and inductance? We just saw the formula there. Can anyone? Remember that a square that's a square uh, turns ratio n, n and the uh, inductance. The basic uh, definition of inductance we saw is total flux linkage with respect to the current, right? LAB we can calculate as NAB multiplied by the flux in that flux main flux in AB divided by. Uh, current flowing in the uh, let's say it's I1, let's say it is L1. Okay, uh, and we, we will uh, replace this uh, flux as MMF by reluctance NAB. Uh, flux is MMF, that is again NAB uh, and I1 divided by I1 is always there, reluctance. Now I1, I1 is cancelled, and we know that LAB is equals to. And a b square divided by reluctance. So directly proportional to n square. Relation. Yeah, directly proportional to n square exactly. So similarly, l c d is equals to n c d square divided by reluctance. Since they are both wound on same core, reluctance is constant. We can cancel out these and directly proportional. So l a b by l c d is equals to n a b square by n c d square now with this simple relation we can calculate the self inductance of coil c d l c d is equals to n c d by n a b whole square multiplied by l a b now 200 divided by 300 multiplied by l a b which is 3.6 so it's uh, 4 pi 9 into 3.6 it's 4 times 0 0.4, 1.6. Yeah, simple. Uh, it's already a relation we discussed here. So, with the available data, how we can get to uh, the, how, how, how should be the approach? That's what we have to uh, keep in mind. We know the turns ratio and we know the inductance. So, it's directly proportional to square of uh, turns ratio. That's a simple uh, relation we are seeing here. Yeah, now it is being asked to, to calculate the mutual inductance. Mutual returns will be same for the both coils. That's what we see. N1, N2 by uh, current we saw. The, uh, N1, N2 by reluctance we saw it. And yeah. Can someone tell me how to calculate the uh, mutual inductance? So L1, we know. That is NAB. NAB square by reluctance. And we know M. 
and AB and CD by R. So these are only values uh, we know, right? And can someone tell me how to calculate M with this? We already know it. We just have to divide it. LAB divided by M is equals to NAB squared divided by NAB into NCD. Since reluctancy is same, we will get cancelled out. Now, this NAB gets cancelled is equals to NAB divided by NCD. Simply N mutual reluctancy is equals to NCD by NAB multiplied by LAB. Okay. Now, how much is NCD? 200 by 300 multiplied by LAB. LAB is 3.6, I presume. Now, it is 2.4 Henry. Okay. Our simple relation, we know the formula for inductance and uh, we just calculated this mutual inductance with that. Uh, the final question for the session, we will close the session with this and uh, this is uh, the last topic which discussed today, energy stored in the coupled coils. Now, here it is saying that uh, we are passing two amps current in uh, uh, through the two series connected coils, the same current flow and how much electromagnetic energy in joules uh, will be stored in the two coupled coils. Now, let's write the formula for it. Half L1 I1 square plus half L2 I2 square plus or minus M L, uh, uh, what is it? M I1 I2. Yeah. So, this is the formula we have derived uh, in the discussion. Now, we have to decide what should be the polarity of it and we, it's just uh, 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 substituting the values, right? Let's say uh, we will try to uh, write it in terms of a equ equivalent circuit so that we can know the uh, direction and also the um, uh, polarity of the voltages. Now, I'm writing it. If 2 amp circuit is 4, we have to give some kind of supply to it and there will be two voltage sources here and another voltage source here and yeah to provide a closed path we should there should be some kind of closed path here and they are connected in series and okay this is plus minus and we have passed some current i1 here and this polarity we know that is j omega l1 i1 and uh, this will be the mutual part right j omega m I2 and this will be again plus minus J omega L2 I2 and this will be J omega M I1 and here we will have uh, some kind of voltage drop across the uh, load here. We just are providing uh, uh, closed path here. If there is no uh, drop, there won't be any drop there. Now, to decide this polarity of this, what should be the plus and minus of it, we will go back to the discussion which we had. Now, uh, what, what will be the current? Uh, see, see. Uh, there is no voltage source here. Now it will be like this, and the it the same current uh, same current will flow like this. So this will be the current direction. Current will apply, and current will uh, take uh, the path here. So previously it is voltage source, and we are trying to. Uh, get the energy supplied by the source that we take assume the current direction to be like this but now the current is flowing in this direction uh, this is how the current is same current will flow through both these someone has joined the call okay now we have to decide on this now let's go back to our discussion and we will see what the current direction we have got in the voltage so here it it, it, it is plus the got from the equation that is plus we got when the current uh, is being supplied by this. So here it is supplied by this source. Now if the current is like this and we have got this uh, polarity of plus and minus uh, uh, that is what we got, right? Yeah. And now since the current is through these sources and it will be like uh, if it is from this direction we have plus and minus as for this voltage source and dy n by dt 
and uh, yeah again one more thing we saw here as one of the attendees also pointed it out so here it, if you see the current is flowing in this direction now it should be minus and plus minus and plus so yeah the same explanation the same explanation what we discussed here uh, because of the current uh, it is it is entering in this point so this is the bottom is plus and uh, here also the bottom is plus that's why we decided to plus here and the same discussion we, we are having here as well okay sorry the current is One second, we just okay. Yeah. Hmm, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, so this current is entering here. So whatever is the polarity here, uh, it should be plus and minus. It should be plus and minus here as well. So yeah, the same, uh, the first uh, equivalent circuit we have seen here. That's the equation here. So we will get a minus sign here. Uh, it's not, it should be minus sign here. So that's what we will have to take care of because I, I, I'm writing individual voltage equations as well. So you can see E1 is equals to L1 di1 by dt minus m di2 by dt and e2 we will have l2 di2 by dt uh, minus m di1 by dt it's all based on the current direction what it should be now p is equals to e1 i1 plus e2 i2 uh, okay now dw will be p into dt and if you multiply all this, uh, we will have, I'm writing the uh, final expression, half L1 I1 square plus half L2 I2 square minus M I1 I2. I'm, I'm not doing the derivation again. We already did that. It's just as priority is different here. Now, yeah, you can substitute L1, you can substitute L2 and you can substitute I1 and I2. I, because it's a series connection, I1 is equals to, I2 is equals to 2 amps and yeah you can submit it i'm uh, sorry uh, you can substitute it l1 is 3.6 uh 2 square 4 plus half into how much is l2 we got here l2 is 1.6 henry 1.6 into 4 minus m is 2.4 2.4 into 2 into 2 4 so yeah someone calculate it uh, and tell me the answer I will also calculate with you. I will just tally with my answer. Seven point two plus three point two. Okay, three point two minus nine point six. Nine point two. 9.6 okay yeah so how much is this uh, minus 3.2 minus 7.2 is it 0.8 yes sir 0.8 okay it's 0.8 joules so this is what the energy stored uh, that will be stored in these two coupled coils since it is a uh, series connector uh, we know that the same current is flowing through the two coils and uh, that's how we uh, substitute the current values as same if it is not same we have to calculate the uh, secondary current as well so that's uh, based on uh, equations we have to calculate it since it is equally uh, series connected we know the current is same and 
and yeah and just to uh, have a quick uh, revision uh, of the concepts we discussed today first we started with the basic concept of a rotating machine uh, what 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 itself uh, winding itself together in a machine and how we can arrive at the equivalent circuit that is needed to uh, predict the performance of a machine via the uh, circuit concepts after that we try to solve uh, some problems uh, on that on these concepts what are inductance self inductance mutual inductance and we try to solve some problems on that as well and also we look at the small concept of energy storage energy store and couple of coils and yeah so with those two uh, concepts we try to solve uh, four to five questions on that simple uh, questions and simple uh, definitions and yeah so if you want to uh, if you want to uh, understand more concepts and discuss more concepts uh, uh, we are here uh, and you can always uh, text us uh, you, you can always uh, send a email to us or you can raise your concerns in the discussion forums in the in your nptl uh, portal we will always get back to you uh, with the doubts and as well so if you try to uh, clear your doubts in the uh, discussion here itself whatever uh, we have we have discussed and you try to discuss in it and uh, we will try to solve here itself and yeah i think swapnil has some doubt uh, yeah swapnil yes sir uh, sir the value j omega into mm -hmm. mi2 yeah and and m into di2 by dt hmm both are same they both they both are same right sir yes same sir then uh, why the direction the sign uh, in the primary side primary coil side is different for the same direction current the plus minus is different no that the direction here here, here we are talking right here this uh, one yeah yes sir yes sir yes sir no the val the magnitude you are talking about m di2 by dt that is m j omega the magnitude is independent independent of the polarity you know the mag uh, magnitude the polarity will only be decided by the other side current because mutual current mutual inductance is caused oh. the current in the secondary current right so that will decide what is what is yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah good good uh, it's a valid doubt everyone will get confused in the polarity but uh, it depends on the uh, current flowing through this in the secondary side so that that that's what decide the uh, polarity of it and yeah if you have any doubts please uh, unmute anyone and you can ask me or if you if you can't ask or if you have missed anything to ask me and you always you can raise the doubt in the discussion forum as well uh, we will get back to you as soon as we can and yeah a few more concepts uh, uh, not just uh, the inductances and the energy storage uh the there are more uh, other concepts which you have discussed in the week one so that you can have uh, you can join the session uh, from uh, uh, 7 to 8 uh, sorry 7 to 9 session in this uh, my uh, co ta uh, my fellow ta will discuss some more concepts with you and we both will try to uh, discuss as many concepts uh, with you so that you will be uh, having no difficulty while uh, solving the assignment questions and we will help you make the concepts clear so i see there is a one hour clash between these two sessions so my session is from uh, 6 to 8 and his session is from 7 to 9 so there is a clear clash in it i understand people wants to join both sessions or some concepts might be missed by me that will be covered by the other ta so in that way you will your your sessions are getting clashed so i will talk to the ta coordinator and i will see what i can do uh, i i clearly see people wants to join the both sessions and it will be it will be clearly a problem for you so i will talk to the ta coordinator and uh, before next week i will come up uh, with a solution again uh, yeah we can arrange it uh, every week we will meet uh, uh, this session every week every week we will meet at the same time so if there is a uh, change in this time slot uh, maybe i can shift my time slot to 4 to 6 so that uh, there will be one hour gap in between and after that uh, uh, we, you can join uh, the next session for uh, other concept discussion so yeah that that's it uh, we will get back to you with this uh, slot uh, time timings uh, before next week and uh, you will be uh, intimated with if there is any change in the slot so with that uh, sir hmm. yes sir sir will there be more practice sessions for the online exam sir and ptl online exam or will this be enough for uh, the exam for the exam uh, this tutorial will be enough and uh, the concept we discussed in it will be enough for you. It, you you will uh, complete the exam with ease don't worry about it 
okay sir yeah every week we will meet in this tutorial so don't worry uh, whatever your doubts you have you come up with the doubts in the tutorial session we will discuss it and if i am not able to uh, uh, solve that for you if i am not able to explain it i will surely get back to you in the following week i will also have discuss with my team or i will sit with and solve and i will come back get back to you all in the next following with the same with the doubt so yeah uh, looking forward to uh, interactive uh, semester this uh, the same thing uh, like the last semester so last semester i was part of uh, machines one course and this time uh, i am uh, i'm being part of this machines two and happy to interact with you all people and i'm looking forward to the following weeks of discussion so um, i thank you for joining this session and patiently listening to me as well as raising some uh, good points and actively participating in the discussion okay yeah we will discuss polarity needs to be discussed uh, which polarity uh, 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 can you clear uh, can you be clear once okay dot concept okay i i see a uh, dot concept uh, convention i will uh, i will do one thing in the next week i will uh, bring some more numericals uh, for the dot concepts and i will make a separate um, uh, numericals for the dot concept and then i will uh, we, we we both will uh, solve in the session itself uh, let's bring more uh, insight into dot concept in the next session i will make sure of it thanks avinash for bring, bringing up the doubt and yeah any more any more doubts okay uh, if not i, I uh, once again thank you for all joining and listening patiently to me and we will meet in the next week thank you thank you sir for patiently yeah. solving all the problems and addressing our doubts yeah thank you sir thank you happy to help thank you yeah yeah uh, when is the submission date for the this is regarding only assignment one submission assignment one submission is not uh, today right sir assignment two is also tomorrow uh tomorrow sir or assignment quiz quiz one quiz one submission date when is the quiz one submission date it's it's this weekend right yeah this weekend is uh, before only we are arranging sessions for the that particular week so week one tomorrow okay yeah okay uh, sir okay if, sir if, uh, if i failed submission uh, submitting uh, uh, assignment to tomorrow hmm. so will that never be considered or Uh, i am not sure about that uh, you raise that concern in the discussion forum or you can mail to the course coordinator uh, ta coordinator they will reply it or i will i will ask what happens okay okay uh no i i am not aware of uh, scores and assignments i am i am only tutorial ta i think uh, you were uh, course ta uh, will communicate those scores with you those will be uploaded in the portal or they will be communicated with you because we are not aware of those because we don't grade your assignments or quiz uh, we only uh, tutorial ts for you discussion forum um, you can raise the questions okay okay uh, uh, one of your uh, friends says that course will be available in your portal itself okay okay then uh, thank you for joining we will meet uh, the next week same time or different time we will communicate with you thank you thank you sir thank